My name is Tom Boley. This is Hayward, Wisconsin. Hayward was once a famed fishing hotspot. Together, we are going to put Hayward back on the map as a serious fishing destination. This film is brought to you by Treelands Resort on the ship of Flowage, Raymer Small Engine and Power Sports, Hayward Area Chamber of Commerce, Hayward Lakes Visitors and Convention Bureau. We are here. We are going to be fishing right. What is up, guys? We are here on Grindstone Lake today. Um, most of the time, I film these things. It's all in one day. I'm gonna split this one up. I'm gonna go scout um, a bite that I hope exists today um, out in some mud. Show you guys how to break that down a little bit. Then, sometime in the next couple days, my good friend Caleb from uh, Raymer Small Engine. And uh, Power Sports is going to be out with me, and we're going to be picking apart some of these grindstone like walleyes. Grindstone is an awesome walleye fishery, a uh, ton of numbers of fish, uh, a lot of fish in that 17 to 22 inch range. Today I'm probably going to show you kind of like the technical side of how I'm breaking a bite down, what I'm looking for, stuff like that. Um, typically this time of year, it's August right now, um, there's a good bite out in the mud, um, and then towards the evening, those fish kind of pull up high, or a lot of them actually come into a lot of these rock reefs out here. So stay tuned, that's what we're going to be doing to start the day today. So when I'm scouting on a bite, what that means is driving around, doing lots of driving, lots of sonar work, actively looking for fish, not wasting any time fishing, just kind of getting an overview of what's going on on that lake, um, you know, at a given time before you start fishing, just so you know what's best. Um, I looked at rocks, mud, uh, some deep weed edges, pretty much everything. Um, what looked the best was mud, and that was in the middle of the day. So I drove around for about four hours looking, um, finally found some stuff I liked seeing. Um, when I'm looking at mud, now there's a lot of fish that use mud, perch, walleyes, suckers this time of year, they're all going to use mud. And they're all going to kind of school up as well, so you could mistake any of them for being walleyes. Um, this is something I don't like to fish. If I have a bunch of fish all coating the bottom, I don't, a lot of times they can be suckers, but they're definitely not super active walleyes. Um, so what I really like to see is stuff like this. This is typically going to be like your cookie cutter, you know, a lot of fish that are the same size kind of all running together. Um, on grindstone, that was a lot of 15 to 20 inch fish. They're up off bottom, they're tightly knit, those are active fish. I like fishing schools that look like that. Just dropped into that school. Barely even closed the bale, and this guy was on there. Come here, buddy. Ah, oh, look at that guy, huh? It's about a 19 incher. That one just choked it, too. There was no, uh, no mistake in that bite when that guy was on there. We're gonna have to do, oh, look at that, fell right out of there. Beauty. We're going to toss him on back. Now after you find fish that look like this on the graph, um, you don't just want to find one pod. You know, you want to be able to have a pod of fish here, drive 10 yards, another pod here, another pod here. You know, that's going to be a productive area of fish. Um, so when I find these vertically stacked piles of fish, I'll slow the boat down, back right up to them so I, I can put my bait vertically right into the fish, and this is what happens. Fish on. See how that school dipped down quick and went straight to the bottom when I dropped down? That's a occurrence that happens quite a bit. Not a big one here, but I'm gonna scoop them all. Go. Not a big one, but illustrates that point really well. Sure you control through these fish, sure you can slip over through them, but there's nothing more nothing more efficient than seeing them dropping straight down to them and bouncing right off their head. Well right after that fish catch I got out of there, um, came back out a couple days later, Caleb met me about 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, it took me about half an hour to relocate that school, it shifts around quite a bit on the mud. Um, and then it was game on with a lot of those same 15 to 20 inch fish. Ooh, there's one. Fish on. First one of the afternoon here. 
It doesn't feel super big. Grab him out and show you guys. If I can keep from losing him. Here we go. We are on the board at number one. That took about 20 seconds of actual fishing. Fish on. Just saying how he should be getting a bite, and there he was. How do you find a mud flat? That's an excellent question. Uh, so most of the time on these natural lakes here in the Hayward area, um, the water's pretty clear. I'm looking for mud flats in that 24 to like 35 foot range. Any shallower and you're probably gonna start growing weeds. Any deeper and it's gonna be below thermocline. Um, so basically those are the depths that I'm kind of looking at. Now if you have a lake that's all like 60 feet deep, well you can throw most of that lake away because those fish aren't gonna be near the bottom in 60 feet of water. Um, look for these basin areas, they, sometimes they might be the mouth of a bay that comes out, sometimes it might be a piece of water between a whole bunch of different structures that's on a shallower plane than some of the deeper sections of the lake. Um, that's basically what I'm looking for. Um, the quickest way to finding fish in these areas is looking at the only border going around it, which is going to be a hard bottom transition. If you don't know what that means, it's basically where a break line meets the flat part of the basin and you're fishing right in that seam. Um, that's the only parameters to these large areas, so a lot of times that's where the fish are. Yeah, cookie cutter. Another one about the same exact size. Grindstone special. Yeah, I'd wonder too if casting out here might be a good idea. Hook up. <laughs> He's gonna be about the same size again. We were just talking about doing some casting and we just went over a giant school, didn't get a bite. I flipped back into him and that one bit right away. You want me to net him? Uh, yeah, he might be decent. Either that or he's just took kind of strange. So we'll get him popped off. I'm gonna say he's about 18 inches long. That was a big school of fish, and for some reason we didn't get a bite. I don't know if we weren't right on him right when we dropped down, but uh, pitched back and got him right away. So we caught a ton of fish out in the mud. Uh, all those fish were on Rapala Jigging Raps, probably my favorite walleye lure of all time, especially in the middle of summer. Um, I got a ton of videos on those, you guys wanna look at them. Um, then we came into a rock hump, and we were marking insane amounts of walleye, and I could not get a bite to save my life on a Jigging Rap. Basically what we did is I got Caleb going with uh, basically a real lightweight Lindy rig, um, quarter ounce uh, weight down to a swivel about six feet of floral um, and then down to just a small octopus hook got him going with a night crawler we were moving across the top of that hump at about half a mile an hour just kind of skipping the tops of those rocks and Caleb caught a whole bunch of fish doing that and yeah, we've been seeing a ton of these uh, ton of arcs on the screen these fish are just screaming around moving really quick and uh, the marking just piles of walleyes but uh, yeah, he's a nice chunky one up on another one You've got to be versatile, gotta be versatile, this, versatile time. this time of bite. You've got to be versatile this time of year to really get the most out of a bite. Everything's situational. Sometimes you're catching fish aggressive. Sometimes you've got to slow down and work through fish a little bit more depending on the day. What did you think of this episode? I thought it was good. I hope people learned a lot from it. I certainly did. Good. You can use all the help you can get. Now why don't you go ahead and do the outro. If you guys haven't already, make sure to watch this video, this video, and this video, and absolutely subscribe to this channel for more videos in the near future.